Today, I would like to introduce you to the concept of combinatorics. So this is going to be an introduction to combinatorics. What is combinatorics? Combinatorics is basically the way of counting numbers. And it's actually very much or very often associated with probability. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you went to a restaurant. You're dining at a restaurant with your friend. And you're ordering food. And there are three choices for the main dish. And there are two choices for dessert. Then how many possible combination of a main dish and dessert is possible given these choices? And you can kind of visualize this. Let's say, so this is the main dish right here. We have the main dish A, we have the main dish B, and we have the main dish C. And we have two choices for dessert. Dessert X and dessert Y. Okay, so let's try and count these possibilities. So you can choose A for, as the main dish. Let me use a color for each letter. So the red stands for A. You're choosing A as the main dish. And then once you choose A, you can either choose X or Y. Right? So you can choose AX or AY. Or you can choose B. And then once you choose B, you can choose X or Y. So that's going to be BX and BY. Or you can choose C and then choose X or Y. So CX and CY. And these are all the possible choices. You've covered all your main dish choices, A, B, and C. And for each of your main dish choices, you've covered all the possible choices for dessert, X and Y. So there are a total of six possible combinations of main dish and dessert that you can choose from here. And this is not only used with choosing uh, main dish and dessert at a restaurant, but it, it, it can be used in a whole lot of different areas. And if you see here, you can kind of deduce the general rule for knowing how many choices there are. So let's say instead of three main dish and two dessert, let's say we had five main dish, five main dish and four dessert. Obviously, there, there's going to be, oops, there's going to be much more possibilities with more desserts and more main dish. So, how many combinations of main dish and dessert is possible from five main dish and four desserts? And if you think about it, there's going to be five main dishes. I'm just using sticks to represent the five main dishes. And for each of these uh, main dish, there's going to be four desserts possible. All right, so there's going to be four possible here, four possible here, four possible here, and four possible here. So what you're doing to get all the possible combinations is basically you're multiplying the number of main dish with the number of desserts. And you can see why that works with this diagram here. For each of the main dish that we have, we can choose four, right? So this is going to give us four different combinations. This is going to give us four different combinations, four different combinations. And we have five of four different combinations. So that's going to be 20 combinations total. So this leads us to the general rule. General rule, if I have, or if there are X choices 
for the first event. And there are... Oops. There are Y choices for the second event. There's going to be so there are oh, let me actually make some room there. There are X times Y choices. for events or the for the two events i guess or i guess a better way of putting it is x and x times y combinations of the two events okay and this is actually not limited to just two events so for example, let's say at a restaurant, instead of just categorizing it into main dish and desserts, let's put an appetizer in the front. So there are three choices for appetizer. And there are four choices for main dish. And there are three choices for dessert how many possible um, courses of the meal are there. So you can take them two at a time. So for the first part here, three appetizer and four main dish, there's, there's going to be a total of three times four combinations of these or 12 combinations. All right, so if there are 12 combinations of the appetizer and main dish, then we can expand that with our dessert and say, okay, there are 12 for the first part. There are 12 possibilities for the first part, and there are three possibilities for the second part. So there's going to be, oops, 12 times three total combinations. So we can expand this theorem or this uh, this process to more than two choices. We can take two of two of them at a time. But since multiplication is commutative, you, there's no real um, right order of multiplying things or you can multiply them in any order. So basically, you're just multiplying all the choices to get the total number of possible choices. Okay, so let's try a few example problems of how this can be used. Let's say we have a lock and this lock operates or can be opened with three numbers, a combination of three numbers that's and each of these numbers are from zero to nine. Okay, what or how many possible combinations are possible with uh, with three digits and each of the digits being from zero to nine? So we have three three slots here, and each of those slots has ten possibilities it's from zero to nine. Right? So we are dealing with ten choices for the first part. 10 choices for the second part and 10 choices for the third part. And if you remember our property, to get the total number of possibilities um, given the choices for each part, we just multiply those. Right? So there's going to be a to the total of 1,000 uh, combinations. And that makes sense because these numbers can go from 0, 0, 0 all the way to 999. Right? And that's going to be 1,000 numbers from 000 to 999. Okay, and let's say 
we have another one. Uh, now we're dealing with a password. And let's say that our password consists of three numbers. Three numbers followed by three alphabets. Then how many total possibles or how many total passwords are possible um, given this rule that the first three um, digits has to be numbers and the last three digits has to be alphabets. Well, so assuming that we can repeat numbers and alphabets, there's going to be a total of 10 possibilities here from zero to nine. 10 possibilities here and 10 possibilities here. And there's going to be a total of 26 possibilities here from A to Z, 26 possibilities here and 26 possibilities here. So if we want to find all the possible possibilities, we can just multiply each of these choices. We can treat each of the digits as the choices that we had um, when we went to the restaurant. Right? So to get the total possible choices, we just multiply those. 10 times 10 times 10 times 26 times 26 times 26. And that should give us a really big number. Let me see what it actually equals. That equals... All right, 17,576,000. So if we follow this rule to make a password, then there's going to be 17,576,000 um, possibilities for a password like this. Okay, so this is what combinatorics does. It basically gives us the possible, all the possible numbers that we can count things and how to combine things okay and this is associated and it's often used a lot with probability